Rick Davies, of course, is a champion. He's been a great player and a great coach of the game. His record uh, is just stands for, for the man himself. It's, uh, he's been one of the real characters. Uh, Rick's always been able to laugh at a, at a bad one, but he's also been a, a tremendous example for young players to follow. And to you, Rick, uh, congratulations for your efforts throughout the years. He coached a couple of times when you played for the state, uh, the state side. Yes, he certainly was a, a great man to be uh, a part of, and of course every player and it was always my intention, you know, to, to play state football, and it was always great to sort of, uh, you know, play under different coaches. And Kills was, uh, well, let's face it, he was the greatest motivator, wasn't he? He could sort of mm. really fire you up, and uh, he played that way. And I always say that in, in my time, a lot of people say about playing coaches, well, probably Jack and Neil Curley are real playing coaches, and mm. there's not too many of them around. And I, I don't, it may be a long time before another one comes. Yeah, I don't know how good my modern history is, but uh, I think Neil Curley and uh, Michael Ace were all Australian vice captains. We've only ever had one, uh, and that was Rick Davies, uh, all Australian captain. And mm. uh, that's a crown that uh, you wear in this state, Rick, that no one else does. Yes, well, I can remember after the game, they were, they were giving away Guernseys. And uh, obviously they thought Kevin Bartlett was going to be that year. So I ripped in to get the number one because I thought, well, this will be my only chance. That <laughs> <laughs> was a size 14. <laughs> so I had to get a, a size 22 and then sort of change the number because, you know, that was something that uh, has been, you know, great in my career. Something you're very proud of. Yes, it is. Uh, just, going back, <laughs> just going back to those early days and with Jack in the studio today, you started, what, how old were you when you came from Port Victoria? Well, it was in 1970. I don't want to disclose my age. <laughs> 16 years ago. Yes. Good. And Jack, has had a, obviously just the greatest influence on you? Yes, well, I've seen, a, a, during the week, I've seen some photos that people have been sending me, and, uh, well, I suppose I, I, Jack must have seen something there because all I wanted to do, and it's like, you know, every kid that comes down from the country, all he wants to do is play football. And uh, Jack sort of spent a lot of time with me, he really did. You know, my kicking was hopeless, and... Uh, my marking wasn't all that flash, and he had a lot of confidence in me, and uh, his persistence and my, I suppose, enthusiasm for wanting to play uh, paid off in the end. I can remember uh, when Jack first started to think about playing him in the ruck, and uh, it was interesting because he'd been to see Rick play in a basketball game, and he said, this fellow can jump mm. a mile in the air without mm. any run. Mm. And he said, I think we can, with the Czech side play, make a ruckman out of him, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened, and of course, those seasons in the early 70s where Rick was just absolutely dominant in the rucking area. We might talk, uh, we might hear from a man now that delivered a lot of messages to Rick and uh, I think Rick gave him a lot of messages back too. Dave Edwards. <laughs> well Rick, you've finally woken up to hang up the old boots, old farmer. I've seen you join Sturt when you came along as a little fellow on our first trip interstate. I was pleased to see you were well looked after by Sandy Nelson at the ripe age of 18. But you've been a fantastic guy I've been affiliated with in the Sturt Football Club and your career. You've given me a lot of hard times, a lot of funny times. I do apologise we did spray your crop by mistake instead of the neighbour next door on your property. I suppose that's the only worst thing I've ever done to you. But in 76, when I was told to come out and talk to you in the first 10 minutes in the grand final about what you're doing down the full back line, you told me to, uh, in uh, generally family talk, what I could do, but I held my ground. And I finally said to you, what are you doing here, Rick? You said, go back and tell the little fellow in the borough I'm down here getting kicks. So when I went back to the coach and I said, Jack, he said he's getting down there getting kicks. He said, of course he is, he's a champion. And that's what you are, Rick. You're a champion on the field, off the field, and somebody out at Sturt that will always be remembered. And uh, I'll always be a mate, and you know where we are. And next time we spray your field, we'll send you the count, and you better pay up and no contras. <laughs> Dave Edwards could certainly deliver a message and uh, of course uh, he's the man from Lloyd, Lloyd Aviation, he'll fly you anywhere, Dave Edwards, it doesn't matter where you want to go, he's got the plane to take you right there. Actually 1983 was a great year for you Rick and uh, what we might do is just have a look at some of the highlights of uh, 1983. He'll get a free kick and plays on the prey. Now can Davies get it? He's such a hulk, he just holds his ground. If you try to run at him, he'll just outbody you every time. Gee, Craig and Davies today, Robert. Now, Craig knew that Davies was going to be one out. So did Halbert, Greenslade and Cunningham, obviously. We won't be able to shut Rick up for six months. Will we? Is he going to talk on the Channel 7 News again, Bruce? I think he'll want to come in every Friday. I think he'll take charge of the show. Just 14 today for Big Rick. Straight through. 
15 goals for Davies. Look at the jumbo prints. <laughs> Rick, Rick, that was 15 goals for a Sturt record. Yes. Um, well, of course, you don't think of that, you know, while you're playing, and it's only sort of a, a ta you know, it's only a sort of a, a record that you don't think about it. I suppose I'll think about it in 10 years' time, really. But 15 on that day, it was, uh, well, it was a lucky day because, let's face it, the team played very, very well, and it was lucky that uh, that I was sort of, you know, having a few marks, and they were getting the ball in there very, very quickly. Can I tell you the lead-up to that game because it's interesting. Up until that time, Rick had only kicked an average of four a game. And we were a bit disturbed that he was coasting a bit. And in fact, he told one of the players in the shower on a Thursday night that he reckoned if he kicked four every week, he'd keep his place fight. in the side and the old fellow would be happy, the old fellow being me, the coach. Mm. <laughs> and so we had a team meeting on the following Sunday when Rick had averaged four. And I said, Rick, you know, we ought to be getting more goals from you. What do you reckon you can kick? And he said, oh, I think I can probably average six. So the following week he came out against West Adelaide and kicked 15, and the following week against North Adelaide kicked nine. So he answered the challenge in more ways than one. In two weeks, in fact. Mm. Yeah. And of course that was a big result because they won the Premiership West is that year. They, yeah. they had a supreme team, so you really you know, did it against top opposition. Well, West Adelaide, they were sort of the best side in that year. By and, uh, far. Not by far. Rick, Rick Davies, in fact, kicked 100 goals this year, and here it is. One on one, Davies and Williams. Davies back. Front spot, Williams tried to come over the top, Davies too strong, and the Sturt champion has got it well 13 metres out right in front and should not miss from here. And you just, just listen to this crowd go berserk if he gets it through. Kick number 11, Richard Hamilton looking disconsolate as Davies goes towards the line. There it goes. seven for the day. What a magnificent effort for a man who was deemed to be almost a triple pre-season and still has to favour that left knee. Of course, that, it didn't stop there, Rick. Uh, 1983 went on for you. It didn't end on a good note, team-wise, but in fact you kicked a, a, a South Australian record and it happened in the grand final. Graham to Davies. Wilson, short to Davies, and that's what Sturt have done all the season, that sort of movement, but not today. The West Adelaide centre line have held strong and firm. So Rick Davies with an opportunity to put Sturt within five goals. Wind across from left to right. It's a very powerful kick by the Sturt captain, and straight through the centre. They're now 15 goals, 12, 102. West Adelaide, 20 goals, 13, 133. And so Davies goes past. Hey, Rick, you've had to fight hard for your goals, but uh, some of them come uh, just a little bit easier, like this one. Have a look at this. Yeah, there's no doubt about Craig Barm. He, he, uh, he's a really committed footballer for Norwood. Committed. Even the Norwood players are laughing at the, the Norwood hierarchy. That is incredible. How could he, how could he do that, Robert? It's unbelievable. <laughs> like you see some things happening, buddy. Imagine how he feels. Oh. And of course, only one player on the field could do that, really, when you think about it. He's a, he's a, a character in himself, Craig Barr. I just said he was a committed thing. footballer, too. He just committed Harry Carey on that occasion. <laughs> Very funny. It, sh <laughs> it really did shock me because, you know, you're standing on the mark and all of a sudden it hit me right in the face. And then he started, I didn't know whether they were going to pay the mark or yeah. not. Yeah. But of course, when he was running in at me, I thought, well, hello, I've got to do something here. <laughs> well, how do you think I felt? I'm just giving him a gigantic build up. This man is a terrific footballer. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked it straight into full forward, which was quite extraordinary. <laughs> Rick, um, uh, fortunately, we're, we're not, we're not going to lose you to the game. Uh, it's, a, it's a new career now as a non playing coach. Uh, what are, you, are you warming to it? What are your feelings about it? I'm looking very much to it because I now realise that uh, you know when you get sort of get into a coaching job, you don't know whether you really want to be a coach or whether you're just there because it's after football sort of thing. Now mm. I've worked that out that I really want to be a coach. I'm really looking forward to it, and I think that now 
as a non-playing coach comes the real test. And let's face it, you're a fool to think that uh, coaches go on forever, although Jack has. Um, but, you know, and to make it uh, your whole life, and there's not too many sort of footballers that ever do that. Mm. But I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm really fo looking forward to the challenge. Yeah. Rick, you've been a, a great ambassador to the game, and uh, you're one of those guys that uh, named the day when you were going to finish. Uh, you did. You said it would be on your 350th. It was. You went out in style. You booted eight goals, and uh, congratulations on a wonderful career, and uh, we certainly look forward to uh, being able to talk to you in your uh, capacity as a playing coach. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Peter. Thank you, Rick. And uh, Ralph Sewer, we're going to talk to him a little bit later on, but I just love that Craig Baum incident so much. We're just going to have a look at it in slow motion now as we uh, go to a break. In fact, we're not going to do it. All right. We're going to say goodbye to Rick instead. Thanks very much, Rick. <laughs>